And we're back here today talking episode 5 of Marvel's What If Show. Today we're talking zombies. That was literally just the title of the episode, Zombies. And we've been anticipating this episode for a while. They've been putting the promo material out pretty much since the show was announced a few months ago. And uh, I've been anticipating this one, and it was definitely interesting to put, you know, to say the absolute least here. It was one of the shorter ones at around 33 minutes, but uh, definitely a lot to get into. I am... Uh, aware of the fact that this was based off a comic, I guess. You guys can shed more light on that, but uh, we got a stack panel here today per usual. Chris, you're back. BR underscore doctor on the Twitter machine. Doc, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Looking forward to talking about how dangerous Hank Pym is to the universe. <laughs> I mean, he is really essential to quietly, to, to, to pretty much everything in this episode. So, uh, yeah, he was uh, quite the badass in this one and in the last episode, or not the last episode. It was that episode a couple of episodes ago with the uh, Mightiest Heroes, everyone getting killed off and whatever. Phil, you're back, my man. Phil, DL616. Today we're talking zombies. Phil, are you excited? Uh, Yeah, I am. So, <laughs> weird horror movie vibes, but we're here. It definitely did have horror movie vibes, and I love the comparisons by Peter, too, throughout the episode about the horror movies, and uh, I think it was... Who, who said something about, like, oh, no, we don't have... We don't watch horror movies, or I don't watch horror movies. It was like, I watch American sitcoms or something like that, or something along those lines, and I thought it was a great line. Uh, Tom, you're back as well, my man, for the first time since we broke down Loki a few months ago. We just saw Shang-Chi with you over the weekend. We're going to be breaking that down for your <coughs> podcast momentarily. Tom, you're on the Twitter machine as well, at Tom Clark Pods, correct? Yes. Tom, what's going on, man? Welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm anxious to uh, dive in. This was a fun episode. I enjoyed it. So Yeah, a lot to get into here. Well, this was quite the interesting episode. So like I said, and I need to get more insight from you guys. Chris, can you shed some more light in the fact that this was a comic and how much of this episode was inspired from that? I actually never read any of the Marvel Zombies stuff that came out like mid-2000s, I believe. So mm-hmm. it was after the point where I had stopped sort of reading it regularly, but before I had kind of picked back up with a lot of stuff later. So it, this sort of escaped me. All I know is that the original run, Robert Kirkman of the walking dead was involved quite a bit, but Mm. that's the extent of my knowledge. I think it was just like an offshoot thing where they're like, just set it in a different universe and have fun with it. Interesting. Yeah, I was curious to see how much of this was actually related to the comics. Uh, what about you, Phil? You're familiar with the zombie Marvel comics at all, or is that kind of your extent of uh, your knowledge of the Marvel zombies as well? Um, I remember like the original miniseries. Um, God, that was seems like it was forever ago. I don't, I don't remember like what caused it. I'm not even sure if we got like a catalyst during that time. If it was just like a it was just like a mini series that then spun off into all these other things. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What about you, Tommy? Any uh, familiarity with the zombies uh, of Marvel? I, I read the original, and it's been a minute. Uh, and I, I have yet to go back through the long boxes and dig them out and, and try to refresh my memory. I totally should have for this, of course. But uh, um, my, my memory is going to be vague. So the, the idea of how the virus came to be, I don't think is what happened in the book. I would have to look that up to be sure but as far as the animation the um the look of the episode and everything it's very much in keeping to my knowledge with how the book looked and i think they did three different uh runs of marvel zombies that thing when it hit Mm -hmm. it took off like wildfire and was a huge hit when it uh when it dropped so good stuff do you know when it dropped oh man no um Um, i want to 2004 right 2005 Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was mid two thousands. Yeah, I think two thousand five. I remember hearing about it when I was in college from somebody and being like, "Oh, that sounds weird." <laughs> I was gonna say I was curious if this was like during the zombie phase of like when Walking Dead started up, but I know that was twenty ten, so obviously this predated all of that. Um, do any of you guys watch The Walking Dead? And if so, if this had any similarities to that type of show? Because that gave me, in, in the few episodes I've seen of that show, it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. I mean, I did. It's been probably three years since I stopped watching The Walking Dead. Well, it's still pretty good. I mean, that's the first, what, six, seven years of the show? Yeah, I saw. I stuck with it for a while, but it eventually got to the point where I just didn't really care anymore. <laughs> what yeah, about you? you know, what was stay invested for, you can only stay invested in characters for so long. I think they're on the final season now, right? Maybe, but there's like a billion spinoffs already, so... <laughs> 
I think there's movies in the works as well with uh, with Rick Grimes and whatever. What about you and Phil? What about you guys, uh, Phil and Tom? What about you guys? Have you guys seen uh, like followed Walking Dead at all in correlation to this show? Um, no, I just I thought it was a smart um, callback to say I've only watched sitcoms. I don't watch horror movies. It was Okoye <laughs> that said that. Oh, okay. And Okoye is actually on Walking Dead, the actress that played her. Holy shit, you're right. I totally forgot about that. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really smart. Hmm. That's pretty cool. She's like one of the main characters, too. She's Michonne, the badass samurai, sword-wielding <laughs> warrior. And she was on it for a while, right? I don't think she's on it anymore. No, I think she still is, I really? believe. Yeah, yeah, they're not killed her off. Oh, wow. Because um, she's still alive, like, at the end of the comics, I believe. Because I think the Walking Dead comics wrapped up, like, last year or the year before, mm. and she was still alive. So I don't think they're going to kill her. But, yeah, she's, like, kind of took over as one of the main characters when Rick Grimes was sort of written off the show. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I thought she may have been killed off a while ago. I know a lot of the main characters were killed off a few years ago, but hmm, I didn't know she was still on. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, so kind of going back to what you, Tom, said earlier about like how the virus started. What were your guys' thoughts on that? Do you thought it, Did you think it was clever kind of going off of what we saw in Ant-Man and the Wasp? It was a clever twist on that, and that was how this all kind of came to be. Uh, I'll start with you, Tom. What about your thoughts on how the virus came to be and inside of everything that it did at first affecting Hank Pym and or Janet first and then Hank and then everything else from there. Uh, in, in classic Marvel style, let's tie everything together. Uh, and I love that idea. I love that idea because, you know, uh, we'll get into it later, of course, with uh, Sean Chi, but just the idea of if, if a happens, then B has to happen. And it's this idea of the quantum realm. We go back in time and, Yada, yada, yada. Isn't it convenient that the quantum realm can get us back in time? Cool. But the idea that there are repercussions, man, like we're screwing with something that we don't really understand. I love that. I thought it was a really good way to introduce this. I think it's something that none of the heroes could possibly control because they don't know that much about it to begin with. Even Pym himself knows enough to be able to travel through it as Scott does and as Janet does, but at the same time, do they really know as much as they should know? The answer is probably not. So I love the origin of this. It just makes the most sense, and I thought it was... You could you could maybe say it's a cop-out to use that because it's quick and easy and it just gets you hitting the ground running, but at the same time, I loved it. I thought it was a, a great way to, to introduce it to the story and get everything going. I was surprised that the zombie apocalypse happened as quickly as it did because they were like, okay, that happened. And literally within 24 hours, the entire state of California, whatever the hell it was, was everyone was uh, infected by it. So I, obviously they could only show so much because it was a 30-minute episode, but I thought the timeline of it was pretty interesting. Uh, what about you, Phil, in, in terms of how the virus came to be and how they executed and how they handled the whole zombie invasion? Or were you a fan of it? Um. <clears throat> I, I did like the idea of um, this is again the Pims meddling and then it you know blowing up in their faces. Um, I, I really liked that uh, scene of of uh, Hank coming to the micro uh, the microverse, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, getting there and Wanda's out there like alone, and then she just turns around and you get all of the visuals of that. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I thought that was cool, and like I said, I mean, it was right after, at the very end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, so it obviously ties in perfectly to, as Tom was just saying, and everything else, and then Thanos at the end, which was an interesting swerve. Uh, what about you, Chris, in terms of how they handled the whole zombie apocalypse? Were you a fan of it? Because obviously it seemed like everyone was very easily infected. Captain America got bit for two seconds when he wasn't looking, and, and then they had a zombie Captain America. And the fact they were able to use their powers, and they knew how to use their powers as zombies, I thought was also an interesting twist. Yeah, explaining it as like a quantum virus was just an easy way for them to sort of be like, this isn't the usual zombie thing, so we can explain away why they're at least halfway decent at fighting still. Because mm -hmm. that is a staple of zombie movies, is they're just sort of brainless, and in this it's like, you know, he's still operating the Iron Man armor pretty efficiently. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy how in that mini scene in the back of the train between Bucky and Captain America when he was already, you know, a zombie Captain was, uh, Captain America was, how quickly and how easily he killed them. And again, I know they can't really go in depth with a lot of stuff because it is a shorter episode and it's just the nature of the show. 
Um, but how that whole thing was done was interesting. And I saw some criticism of it with how quickly and how easily it was done. Other people were offended, but I saw a lot of mixed thoughts on this episode, surprisingly, at least compared to the other ones. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, you kind of mentioned it right there, Chris, but compared to other zombie shows and movies, those classic tropes, do you think they did a good job of making it interesting and keeping it interesting with the characters of the Marvel universe? Or was it too horror movie esque and it was just predictable and you didn't like it? I actually really, I enjoyed this episode a lot. Mm -hmm. I thought the characters that they used were interesting because we got to see some people interact that don't normally interact. Yeah. Um, I really like that they made Hank Pym basically responsible for the destruction of the Avengers in two universes now. Because <laughs> <laughs> he brings Janet back and, you know, that's that's what kickstarts the whole thing. And so, yeah, he's just a dangerous dude. But, I mean, yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I thought the way that they told the story in this episode was nice and brisk like it moved along at a good pace where it felt like they covered a lot but it never felt like they skipped over anything that they needed to spend more time on yeah you going back to the shared universes thing i mean or i, I mean and, and on the subject of shared universes and you mentioned how hank pym was kind of responsible for it all do you think if we get an episode about these shared universes where all these what if episodes kind of cross over because it was hinted at one point that could be the case because uh, we saw, I think it was in like promo footage or an ad or whatever. It was like the Doctor Strange from the last episode was interacting with Captain Carter from the first. So, do you think that these universes could interact the zombies one with the assassination of the Avengers one, and they can kind of be both blaming Hank Pym? Maybe. I mean, it's it's something that we've been talking about a little bit since this started. Is the possibility of them doing some kind of big crossover with these universes at the end. But I mean, I wouldn't be mad if they don't, and it could, it could just be a couple of the universes are involved. It might not even be like anybody from the zombies story is involved in that thing. So, yeah. but yeah, it would be cool if, if any of that happened, because we still have some people alive here. I mean, we have a one legged T'Challa, we have Spider-Man, we have, <laughs> Paul Rudd's head floating around with a cape like <laughs> I got to say, say they they did a good job mixing in comedy in this episode in particular because it's such a like even for animation there was a couple spots where I'm like man Marvel really allowed them to get a little more gruesome than I expected I mean they exploded like, a lot of people well I was gonna say when uh Wasp explodes Sharon Carter and then she's like <laughs> ew I'm covered in Sharon and like they make a joke out of it. I'm like, that is morbid. Yeah. Uh, that's what, that was my next question for you guys. What were your thoughts and how the comedy was handled on this episode? Because again, like I said, I saw some people that weren't a fan of it, but uh, Chris, you just mentioned it, but what about uh, you and uh, Tom and Phil? What about you guys? What were your thoughts on the comedy in this episode? Um, I thought all of the Paul Rudd stuff was very Futurama esque. And so <laughs> on that level, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> very Futurama. What about you, Tom? Yeah, I uh, 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 I get that people can have whatever opinions they want, but good God, it's a cartoon. People need to lighten up, man. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> I'm just saying, superheroes and his cartoons and his actual voice actors get just let it go, man. It, it's I, I get it. I, I get why criticism, or whatever. But you know, it's you got to lighten it somehow. I mean, there's a lot of blood and guts in this, even though it's it's you know the way they handled it, I thought was pretty well done, but. It, there's a lot in this episode to sort of kind of drag you down. Your favorite heroes are pretty freaking horrible now, and uh, <laughs> it, there's there looks to be no hope. And uh, yeah, so speaking of the comic, I, I've, I'm in Comicsology right now, and Kurtman actually wrote Marvel Zombies. Yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah, and it's pretty intense. Like from the jump, they all have their wits about them. They're all speaking as if they're still alive and, and nothing's wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because uh, my wife has been watching the What If series with me since it started, which she was hesitant at first, but she's on board because every week it just it's really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're watching this one, and she's like, how come they're all still okay? And they're like moving around and using powers as of it. And I said, because they're not dead. <laughs> which, you know, going back to the idea of, of how do we think it's handled, I love that because if they're dead, then that throws a whole other wrench in this thing. But the fact they still have their wits about them and pretty much still have their minds about them makes sense. Again, the, the humor, dude, I, 
I was okay with it. I mean, I'm not saying I have a dark sense of humor, but I thought the way they handled it was pretty good. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I also agree with the fact that, um, like you just said, in terms of how they handled it with the uh, superpowers and everything else, it made it more interesting because if they didn't have their powers, obviously they'd be much less of a threat than they were, uh, the, event, the, the Avengers that were infected anyway. And I thought it was also super impressive. They got pretty much Everyone. I mean, they had a hell of a caster in terms of the amount of people they brought in to voice. I think we had probably more more voice actors brought back for this one than for the um, actual Avengers one, like two episodes ago when they all got killed off. Like they had pretty much everyone reprise their roles except for Tom Holland. He was like the only one missing. And the guy that filled in for him, I thought did a great job. Did that stand out to you guys at all? Um. Well, who did who did his voice for this? Do you guys know? Hudson Thames. I'm reading here. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was someone that I don't know if he did like Spider Man before or something that sounds familiar. I thought he did a great job. I think in a lot of ways, um, Peter is kind of the heart of this episode. Um, I really liked the Zombie Land stuff he did towards the beginning of the episode. Um, yeah, I mean, even like his speech to to Hope um, before she sacrificed herself was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of staying positive. It was during that speech. Did you guys notice he mentioned Uncle Ben? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's that, that's our first mention of Uncle Ben in the MCU, technically, right? I think so. I was going to say, he's been referenced. I know he was on the briefcase in, uh, in the last Spider-Man movie in, in Far From Home. Um, could that mean anything? Do you guys think we could see in, in, in the inclusion of Uncle Ben on the Sooner side, or was that just kind of a random Easter egg thrown in there? I have a theory that they're saving the Big Ben reveal for something big, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're saving it for the next movie um, when you have something like it's a way to um, have a rallying cry for, you know, him or any other Spider-Man. Okay, so in Far From Home, you think it's going to happen? Uh, maybe, but I, I just foresee they're going to save it for some big emotional moment. Okay. Yeah, it would definitely be different from the norm compared to the other Spider-Man movies where they kind of got it out of the way quickly. Um but yeah, no, I mean, I don't know what else there really is to say about this episode other than I agree with you guys. I thought it was enjoyable. And like the twists and the turns with like the Wanda and Vision stuff I thought was really well done. Um, that was great. The only thing I didn't really understand was when Hope, she got infected. Obviously, she, she sacrificed herself and whatever. She knew that she was going to get infected. So if she knew she was going to get infected. Wouldn't Obviously, she was infected while she was giant. And that ended up being posing a problem later on. Couldn't she have just, I don't know, killed herself or something? I mean, that sounds dark, but... I mean, wouldn't that have uh, avoided that problem towards the end of the episode? It seemed like she sort of passed out right as she was dropping them off. And that's mm-hmm. why she just, like, falls back into them. So I don't think she was able to, like, trigger her thing to go small again. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting. And plus, not to get too technical with a with an, an animated thing here, but uh, did they cover in this? Because I don't recall them saying, like... Like, I guess what I'm saying is, unless you're torn to pieces, if you just, if you drop dead, can this thing reanimate you? Because if the answer is yes, then she would have got back up anyway. Maybe I don't know. Well, she did get back up as a zombie because as they were escaping on the Quinjet, she grabs the back of it. Oh no, yeah, but like, but like, she's not dead. Technically, mm-hmm. it it's not killing you. It's a virus. So once it takes control of you, it's you're not dead, but you're. I mean. They're like they're calling them zombies, but I uh, mean to be a zombie, you you die first. And then, this is me getting too way too deep in the weeds on this, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it just yeah, makes sense, I mean, though. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. Plus, I mean, the end of the episode ends with Zombie Thanos standing near Wakanda. So it's like, are they even going to be able to do anything with the Mind Stone? It's it seems like they might just be screwed. <laughs> yeah. But I loved the. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the episode was Peter Parker in the cape. Oh yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was, it was a nice little. It felt like it felt like an intentional reference to Into the Spider Verse. Yes. Do you think? And I think yeah. Happy Happy Hogan is the unsung hero of this episode. I loved him. <laughs> blam! 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Then he turns zombie and he starts like whispering it. Blam! 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 <laughs> 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 Yeah, that was, that was good. I love when Akoya thought that he was an Uber driver. Yeah, I'm a personal <laughs> chauffeur. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. But uh, I thought the, uh, the people were making a big deal out of the Bucky line where he's like, I guess this is the end of the line, Cap, after he cuts yeah. him in half. Yeah. 
Yeah. But like, I'm shocked that nobody's talking about how funny it was when he was introduced in the shower. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. And then he just grabs the one like Eastern European dude by the neck and is like, all I have to do is squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you yeah. guys notice that um, Happy was using the watch that um, Tony was using from Civil War? Yes. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's the well, like, closer thing he was using is the watch that he had in uh, Civil War. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. I didn't even pick up on okay. that. Were there any other Easter eggs that stood out? I didn't, I missed that one. I mean, it's funny. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, of course, the way that uh, Bucky caught the shield and threw it back is straight out of uh, uh, Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I, it's funny. It's not, a, it's not an egg, but uh, the whole time this episode's going... And they're on they're on this journey, and uh, we're watching it. And I I stopped and I said, you know Thanos is still coming. And she's like, what? And I said, per the timeline, per where this began, Thanos is still coming. He doesn't know about any of this, and and technically he didn't come to later in the movie anyway. So he's going to be there. And I kind of blew it for her because at the end, of course, there he is with the glove, and it's like, but uh, what a way to end it. Not not to take it home too soon here, but. The ending is just wow. <laughs> I can't because like it's over. Like Chris said, it's over. They're, 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 forget it. Whatever he wants to do with the snap, what 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 would you do now? Like, would, would he even snap at this point? What would even be the point of it? Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, he even enough thoughts to do anything with this now. That's the question I have. Like, how intelligent is he still as a zombie? Hmm. Yeah, Good I was question. curious about that ending, too. I don't know. We're probably not going to get any follow-up on this, so all these questions are just pointless, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny to sit there and pick it apart. Well, that's the thing. So, like, there were a lot of stuff that was left open, like what happened to Hulk and Wanda and, or, you know, not Wanda, but, uh, you know, Hope and everyone else. Like, so that's the thing. Do you guys think that it's more likely we get a shared universe episode where we get some of these answers to these questions, like with the Thanos thing? Or is it more likely we get uh, a, just a, a continuation? In the next? It, felt, it felt like it ended too soon. It felt like we might get a second episode in the second season. but I'm, I'm, Or they may just never revisit. I feel like there's so much to go into here that they got to do a second episode in the second season. That'd be nice. I, I, I love the way it ended, personally. I, I think the idea of, uh, fans, we got to go. We got to go. We'll see you next week. That's kind of how it <laughs> felt to me. So I kind of I kind of really dug that. I like that we're sitting there and and you see Thanos, and I've got my hands stretched out to the TV as if to say, oh, no, and then it just goes off. <laughs> so, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was definitely one of those shock endings. It was well done. But, uh, yeah, no, it was a cool episode. It's crazy to think we're already five episodes in. I think there's four more to go um, in the next four more weeks until they wrap up for the season. And then we still have the Eternals to look forward to in November and then uh, No Way Home, obviously, in December. So they're finishing out this year strong with all this isn't, content they're putting out. Isn't Hawkeye coming out this year still, too? Oh, shit, yeah, actually, probably right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, I think we have Hawkeye, and then was there another show, or is She-Hulk is January, right? Probably. I mean, you could always put stuff out at the same time, but, I mean, if this wraps up in October, um, that wouldn't leave much time for Hawkeye unless it premieres, like, the next week. So I feel like that's going to be, like, late November, and then lead into the new year, and then probably She-Hulk in early 2022, if I had to take a guess. Yeah. It it's seems got, like... It We're shows never Hawkeye for 2021, but I don't know when. Oh, shit. Oh, oh and Hawkeye. Okay, I think it's a She-Hulk. Okay, yeah, Hawkeye. Yeah, sense. I think it's supposed to be like sometime in October or early November is when that's supposed to start. But it seems like they're setting it up where we never have to go more than three or four weeks at the most without something from Marvel, which is... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can understand why some people might get a little tired of it, but I'm excited. I'm excited too, and it's all different stuff though. Like this is so different from anything else that we've gotten so far this year between Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision, Loki. Like this is such a different show, and every episode is something different, and it's all new stuff every week. So I think it's a cool concept, and obviously they already greenlit it for a second season. Um, I don't know. I think it's a breath of fresh air after we went what two years without any Marvel stuff at all. So I'm totally cool with them doing more stuff like this. 
every couple of weeks, taking a break, going to a new show, second season of a show or whatever. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So we got another four episodes to look forward to. I know Party Thor is one of the episodes. I don't know what exactly that would be about. I just know that he's going to be involved in some episode. As for the other three, I have no clue. And uh, are they still not announcing stuff for like the following week this far in advance? Are they doing it like a day or two before still? Or I, I don't remember. I'm not sure. Yeah, it seems like character posters come out a couple days before the episode, so that sort of tells you like what the the main plot will be. But it, they're not giving out like a trailer for every single episode, so some of the story details are still unknown. Yeah, it's probably for the better too, because it only is a half hour show. And I mean, when they were doing the trailers before for all the other shows, they were like an hour, so there was more to pick from there. So. It's probably for the best, but um, yeah, no, very good episode. Appreciate you guys taking the time to help me break it down here today. Chris, you're on the Twitter machine at BR underscore doctor. Phil, you're on Twitter at Phil DL 616. And Tom, thank you for joining us, man. This has been a blast. We definitely got to have you on again to do more stuff. And obviously we're doing your show to talk about Chang chi but you're on the Twitter machine at Tom Clark pods. But uh, yeah, Tom, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thanks as always guys. Pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. This was the last guys. I appreciate it. We'll talk next week about episode six.